My Hero Academia Season 5 Episode 3 is out. And with this new episode, we finally get our first glimpse of the highly anticipated war of Class 1A versus Class 1B. It's officially the start of a new arc in the series, so buckle up folks, we're in for a hell of a ride. And as usual, don't forget to Detroit smash that like button and slide into that subscribe button's DMs to hit that notification bell. This episode covers two chapters of the My Hero manga, following the events of chapter 194 and 195. And so, without further ado, let's jump right into My Hero Academia Season 5 Episode 3, Clash. Class 1A versus Class 1B. This episode opens up following the events of the previous episode, with Midoriya waking up from his premonition of the previous one for all users. Unable to sleep after literally having the history of someone else's life flash before his eyes, Midoriya goes for a run. Which, might I add, is a bit strange, considering the reason he went to bed in the first place was because he was severely overtired after a hard day's training. But I'll allow it, because without him leaving, we wouldn't have got this glorious image of Aoyama in his pajamas. Is there anything this man can't pull off? It then cuts back to the school day, where we see All Might and Deku having a conversation in All Might's office. Midoriya tells All Might everything he saw in his vision, to which All Might explains that seeing the origin of One For All happens to all of its users. It happened to him and his master before him. However, what did not happen to them was being communicated with directly by the first user. As far as All Might knows, Midoriya is the only person this has happened to. Shocking for something so unique to happen only to a shonen protagonist, am I right? But in thinking about what Midoriya said, All Might remembers a conversation he had with none other than his master and predecessor, Nana Shimura. It then cuts to a flashback, where Nana Shimura explains that she believes the vestiges of the previous users they see aren't just dreams or memories. They are actually the remaining essence of the previous users. Her thought process is that if All For One can culminate and pass on power, then it's possible it can pass on more. A person's dreams, aspirations, fears, feelings, thoughts, their essence. And the memory ends with Nana turning to a young All Might saying the now heartbreaking yet hopeful message, even if one of us falls on the way, we can meet up again inside One For All. God, is it too much to ask for a spin-off series or a movie following young All Might and Nana Shimura? Just let me see their relationship, please. But anyways, as the story cuts back to the present, it's interesting to note that All Might doesn't actually tell Midoriya about this memory of Nana Shimura. Instead, he asks Midoriya what the first user meant by the singularity, to which Midoriya believes to be the quirk singularity doomsday theory. Essentially, this theorizes that because with every new generation more powerful quirks are being created, eventually there will come a time when quirks become too powerful that they will either kill their user due to their bodies not being able to handle such raw power, or they will be so powerful that while people still possess quirks, they will be too complex and powerful to control, essentially making everyone quirkless again. Basically, it's the theory that quirks will one day become so powerful that they will either kill everyone or essentially kill themselves. It's actually a really interesting little detail in the show that I thought was quite ingenious to add in. I mean, if you have a system of increasing power with no limits, eventually it will be uncontrollable and either destroy itself or everything around it. Now why is that brought up here? Well, I guess you're gonna have to keep watching the show to find out. After this, Midoriya mentions how when he saw the previous user's vestiges, two of them were silhouetted out and All Might's was a bit blurry. While he has no idea why he couldn't see two of the users, which we still have not seen the faces of to this day, come on Horikoshi, give us the goods. Midoriya theorizes that the reason All Might's vestige hadn't fully formed was because he was still alive. And finally, their conversation ends with Midoriya mentioning how Nana Shimura was beautiful and All Might basically calling Midoriya's mom hot. Yep, that happened. Oh Midoriya, you poor naive child. Upon leaving the room, Midoriya and All Might run into Aizawa and none other than Mr. Brainwash himself, Shinzo. What does it bring your dad to school day or something? And after a very brief conversation, Aizawa tells Midoriya to prepare for his evening training. And with this, we finally get to the main event of the episode, 1A versus 1B. 
cut to Training Ground Gamma, where we see Class 1A all suited up and ready to go in their slick new winter hero outfits. Look at all these beautiful wannabe heroes. As Class 1A are chatting amongst themselves, they are swiftly interrupted by the pure, magnificent, grandiose introduction of Class 1B by the king himself, Nato Monoma. That's right, for the first time in the series, we get introduced to the entirety of Class 1B and we get to see them in all of their gorgeous hero costumes. If you would like to know who exactly each character in this class is, you can check out my video right here where I detail everything you need to know about Class 1B. Look, I know it's a shameless plug, but I'm desperate out here. Mr. YouTube's gonna take my legs. He's gonna take my legs! And as Monoma classically berates Class 1A, Aizawa shows off his questionable teaching style and introduces a mix-up to this battle of the babies of UA. While this is a fight between Class 1A and Class 1B, another student will be taking part in this event. And that student is Shinzo. That's right, Shinzo is attempting to transfer over to the hero course. And if he can prove himself worthy in this training session, he will be offered a spot in one of the classes. Now you may be thinking, how will he take part in this event? Well, the rules go as this. Both classes will be split into five teams of four. There will be five rounds, and in each round, one team from 1A will face off against one team from 1B. The winner of the event will be the class who has won the most rounds overall. As for Shinzo, he will be taking part twice, once on a team from 1A, and again for a team on 1B. Now like the first battle training exercise, these teams are assigned through a lottery. So you're wit who you're wit. The goal of the exercise is to capture and detain four members of the opponent's team into your designated holding cell. Now the teams who have Shinzo with them do have an extra man on their side, so in two matches it's actually a 5v4. The catch is that this is actually a double-edged sword. While the teams who do have Shinzo do have an extra fighter, the team against them still only has to capture four people. So there's an extra person for them to capture. Also, remember, Shinzo is not a hero course student, so he is not going to under any of the training both of these classes have gone through. And that's the rules of the training session. You got it? Good, because I'm not explaining that shit again. As the two classes get split into teams, Shinzo gets put into team 1 for class 1A, which includes Kaminari, Kirishima, Koda, and Suyu Asui. And for class 1B, he gets put into team 5, who is made up of Nato Monoma, Nirengeki Shoda, Yui Kodai, and Reiko Yanagi. But more importantly, as a part of this team, he will be facing off against Midoriya. We got Shinzo versus Midoriya 2 coming in hot, folks! I also want to point out that Shinzo has also become a mini Aizawa, as he is wielding Aizawa's iconic neck scarf thingy. Can someone please explain how the scarf works just once? But he also has a mysterious metallic mask around his neck. What could it possibly be used for? We're gonna find out in like two seconds. And so, with the rules explained and everyone raring to go, the joint training arc finally begins. First up, we've Team Froppy versus Team Vine. Upon starting the exercise, Team Froppy discussed their battle strategy, as they plan on taking down their opponent's strongest fighter, Iabara Shiyazaki, the girl with the vine quirk, as not only will this greatly damage their opponent's overall strength, but it will also allow their strongest quirk wielder, Kaminari, to let loose without any hesitation. But in the midst of strategizing, Team Froppy gets surprised by the beast of Class 1B, Jurata Shishida, and air blow go hard guy, Kosei Tsuburaba. Jurita attacks Froppy and Kirishima, and Kosei locks up Koda in an air prison. Right out the gate, Team Froppy seem to be on the verge of failure. However, just as all hope seems lost, Shinzo pulls out his new trick. Hearing Kosei talk, Shinzo adjusts his new mask, and with it, he speaks out to Jurita with Kosei's voice. That's right, Shinzo's mask allows him to perfectly imitate the voice of anyone he hears. Now that's a game changer. And in believing his friend was actually calling out to him, Jurita unknowingly responds to Shinzo, and the episode ends with the Beast of 1B falling under Shinzo's mind control. Overall, it was a pretty good episode. The ball's finally starting to roll with this new season, and I'm looking forward to see the coming events of the joint training arc. It's awesome to see the quirk singularity doomsday theory introduced in the anime, and I can't wait to see all of the anime-only watchers' theories on what will happen next. But let me know what you thought of this episode. If you liked this video, don't forget to leave a like. For more My Hero content, subscribe to the Lunchtime Crew. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Plus Ultra.